Some late breaking news in Republican Party politics. Tea Party 2.0 just wrapped up moments ago. It was a lot like the original tax day tea parties, only this one was held over the phone and it wasn't held on tax day. And it was convened by the governors of South Carolina and Texas. But other than that, it was totally exactly the same. Most of the news in Republican Party politics continues to be about their internecine warfare. Tonight's winner of the most unlikely Republican Party combatant award actually goes to John McCain's mom, who went after talk show host Rush Limbaugh on The Tonight Show with Jay Leno. What he thinks about or represents of the Republican Party has nothing to do with my side of it. I don't know what the man means. I don't know what he's talking about. The chairman of the Republican Party, Steele, was exactly right when he defined this man as an entertainer. Yeah. And to my horror, the Republican Party made him back up on it. Limbaugh, it, you're a compliment when you say the man is a... Uh, is a Reach, uh, entertainer. I don't know what he is, but he does not represent the Republican Party that I belong to. In response to that, Mr. Limbaugh remarkably went on the attack against Senator McCain's 97-year-old mother. She's right. She's absolutely right. The Republican Party she belongs to gets shellacked election after election after election. So the Republicans are losing elections because of people like Roberta McCain? It's her fault? It's not, say, the fault of guys who publicly pick on 97-year-olds? Meanwhile, a man who was once floated as a potential running mate for Roberta McCain's son, John, Florida, Florida Governor Charlie Crist, is getting a preview of this next election cycle. He announced his candidacy for the U.S. Senate two days ago, and he's already facing an organized opposition campaign from the right wing of his own party. They not only support his conservative primary challenger, they also want to deny support to the Republican Party's Senate campaign committee for the sin of supporting Governor Crist. The blog RedState.com is decrying Crist candidacy, as well as the Republican Party's support for Mr. Crist. They've even started a Facebook group titled, Not One Penny to the National Republican Senatorial Committee, at which members pledge to give no money, no support, no aid, and no help at all to the efforts of the NRSC. In the midst of the continuing and maybe even escalating turmoil inside the GOP, it is Still not at all clear who's going to emerge as a trusted leader, as a bridge builder, or even just as a recipient of grudging respect within the party. One possibility, as we have talked about before on this show, is the quixotic Republican libertarian conservative from Texas, Ron Paul. His presidential campaign last year engendered a surprise, genuinely youth-driven grassroots movement not seen in the Republican Party since Goldwater. And here's where it could get really interesting in 2010. Ron Paul's son, who is also a surgeon, worked on his father's campaign. He shares many of his father's political views, and he is making his debut appearance on this show right now. Dr. Rand Paul, thank you so much for being here tonight. It's nice to see you. Hey, Rachel. Good to be with you this evening. I want to start by um, asking you the same question that I asked your father the last time he was on this show. I want to ask if you agree with that assessment of the Republican Party that I just laid out, that there's some sort of ter turmoil right now over the party's identity. Well, I think so. I think the one thing is the Republican Party's lost their mojo. Hmm. They've got to find their mojo, and they sure aren't going to find it attacking 97-year-old grandmas. So I think we've got to do a little better than that. As I've gone around the country and the state, I think really the problem is believability. We've lost our believability. It's not that our message is so bad, but we've said you know we're fiscal conservatives, and then we doubled the deficit. President Obama recognizes this and he points at us and says, look, who are you to criticize my spending? You guys doubled the deficit under your watch. So I think, it, I think it's going to take some new people, somebody outside the traditional politician to do something good for the Republican Party. I have talked about this a number of times on this show, and I've hosted your father a couple of times on this show because I felt like I saw some real mojo in the Republican Party around his presidential <laughs> campaign. What do you think was behind the popularity of that campaign and the renewed interest in his ideas that we're seeing right now among Republicans? Well, I think it was kind of interesting, some of the people who came to it. Some came from the left, some came from the right. 
A lot of young kids came on the war issue, but interestingly, I was in a house party in New Hampshire, and a young kid came up to me, and he had long hair, and he had a lip ring, and he didn't look like what you saw at your traditional Republican Party meeting, and he said, you know, I came to this, came to believe in what your dad was doing because of the war issue, but he said, you know what I'm most concerned about? And this was a 19-year-old kid. He says, I'm most concerned about the devaluation of the dollar, <laughs> and I just laughed because uh, people come from all walks of life. My dad always says, liberty or freedom brings people together and I think it does and I think they young people like consistency too they like someone who says well you know I'm for economic liberty and the Republicans kind of are but I'm also for personal liberty the Democrats often are for civil liberties or personal liberties but they kind of forget about the guy who owns the Pizza Hut and doesn't want to be overregulated so I think we need to get a little bit of both and I think the joining of the two together could be a very popular message so I think it's a matter of somebody's got to present the message better the Republican Party. Maybe it's slightly different, but we got to get away from going around justifying torture as our main message. And I, I think we've got to come, come out with a better, uh, better spokesman for our party. Well, speaking of which, Dr. Paul, I understand that you yourself have some political ambitions. I was hoping you might talk about those tonight on the show. Yeah, I do. I'm happy tonight to announce on the Rachel Maddow show that I'm forming an exploratory committee to run for the U.S. Senate. We've launched our website tonight, randpaul2010.com. I've got some really old political hacks in California, age 24 and 25, <laughs> who have started up this website. You know how they say if you're over 30, you're way old in the computer business. So uh, we've got some mature 24 and 25-year-olds putting this website together for us. Now, uh, you have said in the past that you were waiting to decide whether or not to run based on whether or not the incumbent senator in your state, Jim Bunning, was going to decide to retire. Has that situation changed? Are you willing to run against Senator Bunning if he stays in? No, I, th I still think that Senator Bunning did a good job voting against the bank bailout, and I've gone around the state saying good things about him. I think the problem is, is that every time a reporter asks Jim Bunning, are you running, their follow-up question is, Jim, are you really running? Hmm. He's done some unusual things in the sense that he's encouraged another candidate to get in the race and start raising money other than myself. As long as they sort of promise they won't run if he keeps running, but that does more to engender doubt about whether he stays in it. And what I hate to see is a politician who might go all the way up to the deadline and pull their papers out an hour before, and then you have one candidate and there's no real primary. And I think the Republican Party is shrinking. I, as I traveled around the country, I said to people, the real message or the real news story here is not who's winning the Republican primaries, but how small the primary is becoming. I went to a bunch of Republican states, traditional Republican states, and in every one of them, the Democrat primary was bigger than the Republican primary. There's something bad going on, and we need to change it, or we won't be a party anymore. Dr. Rand Paul, thank you so much for joining us tonight, and good luck to you. Hope to have you back on the show soon. Thank you, Rachel.